All right, so this is a very impromptu link up with a, a very intertwined friend from many years ago. This is Stephen Blackman. Um, Stephen, introduce yourself a little bit. Hi, I'm Stephen. I'm Mercantile from Barbados. Been living in Paris for about eight years now. I teach uh, marketing at, at a bigger schools here and I work on parts in Metaverse uh, for different companies in Paris. So I've known Stephen for many, many, many years since I was a child because we were in choir together. We played RuneScape together. He was a higher level than me, but we don't need to go back <laughs> to those years where I'm trying to get my Mithril dagger. <laughs> and it's very interesting that we've also ended up in the same field. So I wanted to kind of get some of Stephen's ideas on the Metaverse because it's still a very new concept. Um, 2021 is where it really started taking off and people are still figuring it out in 2022. Oh, yeah. So Stephen, the first question, because there are a thousand answers, what is the metaverse? Well, the metaverse, I like to define it as the immersive web. Um, basically we're using extended reality where through, either through augmented reality or virtual reality to, um, give you a new experience of the, of the internet. And so when you say immersive web, that sound nice and techy, but what does it mean? Well, when I mean immersive web, I mean that, for example, now we have the static internet. When we go to the, we go to the web page, we can click on the browser, but we're actually looking at a, a screen. Okay. Let's do the screen. But now mm -hmm. the, with the, with the universe, we're actually more able to interact, um, differently with the, with the internet. You can actually have, for example, um, visualizations of the internet. We're actually going to actual world that represents, I mean, maybe it can be a brand, a brand space or an experience. Mm. So maybe we're seeing how the reality is now being shaped differently by technologies of development. That makes sense to me. I mean, I realize that a lot of big brands are actually picking it up now. Yeah. So Nike has gone into the metaverse, Gucci has gone into the metaverse and they're giving out tokens or things that yeah. people can experience yeah. in the metaverse that yeah. they can't in real life. Yeah. So what are you most excited for so far? Well, currently I'm more excited about seeing what experiences are going to come out between augmented reality and mm. virtual reality. But there's a big debate on which one is more efficient, mm. which one is better. As well, China recently mentioned they're going to launch the 6G network. They actually have the speeds needed to actually have the right um, experience with the average reality. For example, right now, uh, with 5G technology and the web we have right now, it's not actually fast enough to um, stop the lag and actually let have the real, um, a full beat experience in, in Metaverse. Mm. But now, um, with China's actually development of 6G, it's actually going to be a lot more on the, on dynamic and interesting. Now, one of the big things that even in my office, I've been hearing people say that they don't believe in the metaverse mm -hmm. is the hardware yeah. because they see how it could be useful. They see how the metaverse could help their life. Could They don't yeah. believe in it. But then when they think about putting on this big old headset from Oculus yeah. or an expensive headset from yeah. one of the um, $2,000 or $3,000 companies, they're like, yo, this cannot work for me because I'm not going to sit at home looking like an alien <laughs> with something on my face. Yeah. Do you see the hardware getting better in the next couple of years, or do you think we're, we're stopped where we are? Actually, no, even, even recently, I think we're pretty Ray-Ban launched, launched, recently launched some um, goggles mm -hmm. as well. There was a partnership with different brands, uh, trying to make the, the, the tech less heavy, but I, I, I kind of agree what they're saying because mm -hmm. I'm actually a bit more, um, pro augmented reality than virtual reality. Yeah, true. Yeah, to be honest, um, for now, even got companies like o OVR, our reality, um, is one company that I actually work with a bit as a project nice. and, um, I, I like what you're doing, meaning we can actually still be able to, you know, see the world around us connect, but then we can actually, um, choose that, for example, an event, a pop-up, um, store, maybe do, do, do a treasure hunt mm. and, and that way you, we don't have to, we can use our phones and scan or, or, or maybe some, some augmented reality glasses and that's actually my first thing, but actually it's in development and actually we're actually working on that, uh, at, at the moment. So nice. It's coming up. There's no better place for us to talk about augmented reality enhancing your experience than where we are now, because we're literally at the loop. Oh yeah. If you look around, we, we're at the place of art. We're at the place where people love to get, um, the full experience of what art will look like or has looked like throughout the years. And so they pay to go on guided tours just to get more information about the piece. So they don't want to just see the piece. They want to know where it came from. They want to know who did it. And that's something that augmented reality could definitely help us. All right. I, I do want to switch topics a little bit. Yeah. Still under the metaverse, but mm -hmm. what is your thoughts on tokens generally? Mm -hmm. NFT being part of it, but also um, utility tokens. What are your thoughts on that part of the metaverse? I have to say, I, I, I want to be careful because, you know, we thought it can be one of the best now. <laughs> this is not advice to invest people. This is just uh, my, my opinion. Disclaimer. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and I think it's a, most NFTs are 
it's this big bubble. Mm. The neighbors and NFTs are, are, are going to crash. It's, it's, it's not anything to jump on um, blindly. Um, I find most use in NFTs at the moment based on the adoption of bigger brands. Um, so, for example, we have um, brands that are so rare. For example, we have brands that NBA players. Right. Um, these, these, this is where we're seeing uh, actual use because NFTs value comes from um, the need to have something original. Okay. And then also being able to actually trace uh, your ownership yeah. of that original item. However, most people who buy anything at the moment are buying it through a, a, a pipe. They want to straight be, belong, belong to a group. I'm an NFT collector, I have. So that's the danger. Mm. And when the market is based on a, 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 a passing trend, that's when it can actually crash a lot faster. Uh, if you have, you have, you have um, like a sandbox sand, how they actually are promoting the creation of 3D objects, 3D NFTs. They actually want people to actually own their own uh, digital objects. Right. Right. That's actually, that's actually uh, MC and need there because you have um, people like, for example, uh, Snoop Dogg, they're actually creating their, their, own, their own worlds in the metaverse, in Sandbox, for example. And then these kind of items can actually become um, interesting merchandise. Um, also, we also have um, other projects where there is a hybrid, meaning that you could actually own the physical um, item. Yeah. But at the same time, you have the NFT for it as well. So you own a design, mm. okay? And that's actually making a new, a new argument for all wealthy have been given out. And how many people should get permission Based on how 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 images they used, right? Uh, how they, oh, sorry, are used, right? That's another area that we're looking at. Things I've heard from the extreme side. Mm -hmm. I've heard of a case where someone took a toilet, like a porcelain toilet, mm -hmm. took it underground, smashed it into pieces, and then sold each of the unique pieces as an NFT. And people bought the toilet, yeah, just for a shard of the toilet, yeah. And you know, you see examples like that, and you're like, well, this thing is not just hype, but it's for crazy people. It doesn't yeah. make any sense, yeah. But as you just said, very well, actually. There's also the part of NFTs where it's used to keep track of what is a unique mm. thing that you own and you want to make sure that people know that it is belonging to you. Exactly. NFTs can actually be used for that. Exactly. Mm. I had the opportunity to speak to a couple of security professionals okay. this year about the metaverse. Mm. And one of the questions that they were asking is, how is it going to be governed? You know, when, when you're in an, a space like the, the Louvre, mm -hmm. you have persons who are at the security. Mm -hmm. They have persons that have a baggage check and a, you know, and metal check at the door. Yeah. But the metaverse right now is a free land. Yeah. And that's governance in terms of security for the users, but also taxing. Yeah. What do you think the future of metaverse governance will look like? Well, that is, that question is a, is a big one. Actually, currently I'm looking into it. Mm. So my, my dash is not, is not, is not finished yet. I found the, the trash yet, but I'm looking at those, mm -hmm. as you know. So the model from current model for DAOs, as you most people know, is mainly linked to voting, voting and our petition, yeah. which is pretty useful. But we also have NFT version for, for governance. So we also have, we're looking at using um, NFTs to trace that you own to them more data as well. Well, but, yeah, 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 that, um, is, that you own it? data. Yeah, it's, 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 it's what they called, um, called um, Oasis, the token is called Rose, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And um, they are now talking about having data NFTs. And the stock is a bit pretty obviously, they did that on 20% uh, recently. Okay. So this would have been a great interview a month ago. Yeah, right, cool. yeah, it would be even better, but actually, but looking for it, it's quite new. Okay. They went to pioneers in that area. So, so now we're at the so again, again, we have governance, we have uh, true voting, reputation. We also have, we also have NFT as well linked to the, to the, to the, to the governance so as well. So we're actually getting. Pretty, pretty big. That is, yeah. that's a fantastic point to leave on mm -hmm. because, and I'll say that my dad, who's behind the camera, <laughs> I remember when we first, he first bought his um, Bitcoin yeah. and he gave me a piece of the Bitcoin yeah. and it was worth almost like, like it was, it was a good price. Uh, and then it was like a hundred dollars and then it went up to a certain amount. Yeah. And then he offered to buy it back for me. And at the time I was like, oh, this, yeah, this is like, it was nothing. Yeah. And then Bitcoin shot up the year after to. <laughs> To twenty thousand dollars, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I always look back and I'm like, well, there is benefit to being an early adopter, even oh, yeah. in the case of the Oasis, especially yeah. if there is a business case for it. So although this isn't financial advice, yeah. Um, that that does ring clear to me that a lot of this is evolving, and the more you know about it, the more you'll be able to ask questions. And that's what this is about. It's not about becoming a metaverse consultant. It's knowing how to ask the right questions once it starts coming in play. So, bro, Stephen, thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Wow, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> many, many years. <laughs> All right, cool.